Hello Watch Enthusiasts! Now instead I'd like to talk about various releases over the past month which I've found particularly interesting. And there have been too many to, to mention uh, all of them, but certainly I've, I've tried to include a broad range with everything from very interesting and delicately designed platinum dress watches, through to a very interesting Kickstarter campaign funding an Arctic expedition, as well as uh, a new and, and curious development in the world of the affordable timepiece. However, before I begin the video, I would like to encourage you all to follow the link down below and join uh, The Watch Guys, which is my group on Snups, the social media platform for sharing pictures of your interests and collections, and where you can ask me or indeed any other enthusiasts any questions or, or video requests, which I'll, uh, I'll uh, strive to reply to personally. And for today's featured post, I'd like to include Chris's fantastic shot of the luminescence um, of his Seamaster Planet Ocean, which shows that difference in tone between the green minute hand and green pip on the bezel and the blue for the rest of the dial and hands. And this does show him because attention to detail and the wonders that these watches do present, as far as professional but rather luxurious dive watches go. So I'd encourage you to follow, follow the link down below and, and join the watch guys to be able to really get the most out of the channel and be able to ask me any questions on a quick and easy basis. Now the first watch I'd like to talk about is a new piece from Timex, and this is called the Marlin. And it's an almost perfect replica of the, of the 1960s dress watch from Timex, also called the Marlin. And this is a watch which has, has gained a lot of attention because it is such, a, such an interesting piece. Because rarely do you see a, a vintage reproduction of a watch that is, is a, an almost perfect facsimile of the original. But similarly, this is also important because it marks Timex's return to mechanical watches, because for a very long time now they've only produced quartz timepieces, and so this marks their return to the, the world of the mechanical um, spring-driven um, spring timepiece. And this watch is 34mm by 10mm thick, making it very small and, and slender, which is very much in keeping with the, the sizing of the era, and I think was a very wise choice for Timex 2 to undertake, because it does show that the, the, they really are trying to make a watch which is, um, uh, which is true to the original pieces, and I do respect them for that, certainly. And the case shape of this watch is very well considered, with a, a, a flying saucer sort of shape, with bevels on the top and the back of the watch, which, which is all entirely polished along with an inset crown, which sinks into the case at 3 o'clock. As well as that, we see a sunburst dial, which also is very striking in its execution. On the dial, we see applied indices um, around the dial, um, with every other um, index being, an, being a numeral, with these very interesting uh, and old-fashioned styles of, of font. As well as that, we simply see Timex on the dial, on this cream base with this, uh, this, this sunburst effect, and these, um, the, these, these, uh, these uh, blued and, and blackened hands. As well as that, we see the watch on this uh, this false uh, lizard grain strap, which is a very simple and, and inexpensive leather strap, but I think is very much uh, in keeping with the watch, as far as a sort of a dress watch from the 1960s goes. However, this watch is a piece which has been praised really for its good value, but I must say I, I'm of the school where I, I don't tend to feel this watch does offer that particularly good value, for several reasons really. And the reason why I say this is that this watch is competing directly with real vintage models of this watch, which can be acquired for 30 or £40 pounds on, on, uh, on eBay or indeed in other, other areas to buy vintage watches. And these pieces can often be serviced and brought back to life very convincingly to make watches which are very interesting to wear. And these were American-made watches, as, as the brand uh, was, was from there, and so as a result uh, they do have a certain brand integrity. And so I feel for $200, this watch with its, uh, its plexiglass crystal and steel case, which are very much the same as the original watches, but now with a Chinese movement and a Chinese strap, this watch really can't compete in terms of quality or value with simply buying a vintage uh, product, in my opinion. And you do get the peace of mind, I suppose, um, of having this watch um, for, um, as uh, um, uh, certified by Timex and also um, uh, under warranty from Timex. But nonetheless, it would still be less expensive to send a, a vintage watch in for servicing, especially with the simplicity of the movements in them. Which means, in my eyes, I don't think this watch actually represents particularly remarkable value. And especially since it has a Seagull ST6 movement in it, um, on all counts, though that's very much from what, uh, what I can gather, because um, Timex won't state what the movement is on their website. Which I think is a shame, really, because I would have appreciated some openness with regards to, to what the movement actually in this watch is, rather than simply stating it as a, a manual movement. The second watch I'd like to talk about is a very interesting piece from ZRC. And ZRC are a brand who've been producing dive watches since 1953, and their, their most famous watch is the Grand Fond 300. And this is a, a 300 meter diver which uh, finds its origins in 1953 when they produced a fairly conventional looking bezel, um, uh, bezeled diver. 
But they really struck a, um, a, a, success, a successful design in 1963 when they released uh, what, what really became a, a fantastic design in terms of being used by the French Navy, really until 1974. And these were used by uh, French Navy clearance divers. And the reasons for this was that the watch was, was very, very reliable and, and robust because it had the, the crown placed at six o'clock within an, an indentation into the bracelet as well as this had a dive extension built into the bracelet, as well as a very, very legible setup with very heavily loomed hands and that very clear bezel. And they stopped producing these watches in 1978, but were redesigned in 2015. And these watches now are 40.5mm and water resistant to 300m, with, with a sapphire bezel um, instead of the original plexiglass one. And, uh, and this, this enables the watch to be really a professional diver for the modern world, with the same inspiration from that, that very successful design of the 1960s. And this is a brand who really have incorporated fantastic technology into their new watches, because it features a hexagonal style of case with, uh, with sharp points on either side 9 and 3, which I think makes this watch look, look really truly unique in the, in the watch industry. It's rare to be able to say that something is a unique design, but this really is the case with this watch, and, and I must say I think it looks great but also features enormous amounts of technology. For example, the bezel features at 12 o'clock uh, an aperture, and through this uh, you can clean out the inner workings of the bezel without removing it by simply pouring fresh water through. And this, I think, shows the attention to detail and the, the fact that this watch really is designed for professional divers, which is something which, again, is more and more rare as dive watches become more and more of a, a status symbol, or at least a, of a luxury, um, as a sort of a, a men's timepiece. But here you see a watch which is true to its origins and presents something fantastic to the watch industry. However, the most recent edition of this watch is this model, which is the, the, the ZRC Grand Fond 300 North Adventure. And this is a piece designed specifically for the explorer Albon Michon, who's going to be crossing the Northwest Passage, a 1,500km expedition, on his own. And this follows the, the, the route of, um, of Amundsen's uh, journey in 1906, but this time he's going to do it alone. And this is being funded on Kickstarter um, by ZRC as the timepiece for this, this, uh, this, this adventure, and he will be wearing one of these pieces specially designed for his specifications for this trip. Due to the, the very gruelling nature of the adventure and the fact that uh, this watch has to survive the full trip, there have been a few changes made to the watch. The first being the case um, uh, being redesigned to be sandblasted rather than, um, than brushed, which gives the case a far more utilitarian look and I think works very well, especially with the, um, the, 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 the white of the ice and the white, uh, the, the white indices, as well as those large uh, slabs of, of white hands. Additionally, it now features an enlarged crown, which is, which is there to be used with gloves, and has redesigned end links to be able to feature a strap or indeed the bracelet if you buy it with the bracelet. The watch also features an anti-condensation crystal, which is four mils thick, um, to, um, to be able to, to withstand the cold and, and not just fog up. As well as this, this watch is specified to have a, a date and a cyclops on request of the adventure, uh, adventurer himself, simply to be able to, to monitor time more, more accurately. And the way of purchasing one of these watches is quite different and peculiar, because in the case of this watch, you, um, you order them um, by funding them on Kickstarter. And the prices are, um, are, you can either fund uh, anything below the full price of the watch to get a hat and, uh, and I suppose, a thank you for, uh, for helping with this, um, this endeavour. But if you spend 1,390 Swiss francs, um, you can get hold of the watch on the, 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 the nylon strap. Or indeed, if you go with the full 1,790 Swiss francs, you get it with the, the nylon strap and the full bracelet with dive extension, if you happen to want to go in that direction of having a, um, a timepiece uh, with the bracelet as well. And of course one can't forget this is a professional dive watch as well, and so is still usable for that sort of thing as well, as well as having these additional functions in terms of being able to withstand these low temperatures. And the watch is still anti-magnetic and water resistant to 300 metres. And in my eyes is a really very interesting alternative to something like a Zin U1, in terms of being a professional dive watch with these, these added techni technical features. The next watch in this video is an aesthetic modification of the, the current Hoyer Ortavia. And this is the UAE Special Edition, and is a limited edition of 150 pieces released at the Dubai Watch Week. And this is very similar to the standard model, because it still features the same movement, the same 42mm case, and the same uh, interesting finishing with that, um, that fully polished case, which has those, those um, attractive bevels along the sides of the, 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 the lugs, as well as the very subtle and discreet pushes and crown, which don't really interfere with the, the classical vibes of this watch, except it's a larger size now. As well as that, we see the same layout um, with the same Ottavia and Hoyer on the dial, as well as the same bezel. However, we see a few changes in the colour choices with this timepiece. Now, we've seen black and white dial versions of the new Ottavia so far, with the standard version being a black panda dial with a black bezel, as well as the, um, the, the Jack Hoyer um, limited edition 
being a model which uh, which then features the white dial and slightly more complex bezel insert. This version features a different dial because it's now a sort of a cream, an aged cream, with similarly aged indices which are, are more uh, heavily aged than on the, the standard model. As well as that, the, the panda style of dial is, is changed because now we have these root beer coloured subdials which I think work very, very well, with my only complaint being that the second hand is now difficult to see due to its, its similarity in colour to the rest of the dial, though in person this may well not be a problem. As well as that, we also see the date window uh, still placed at 6 o'clock in a contrasting white, which I think it, it would have been nice to see if it had been uh, matched to the colour of that root beer subdial, bearing in mind the fact this is a, a full special edition model. Alongside that, we also see the, the bezel insert, which is now this root beer colour, to match those other accents and is, is in my eyes quite an attractive version of this watch because I do like those sorts of colours on watches. But I, I assume this won't be to everyone's taste because it's true, it isn't as neutral as the standard model. Internally the watch remains the same with the, the very interesting and I feel very um, a very well made Hoyer 02 movement which uh, seems to be, to be doing extremely well in terms of being the movement of choice inside the Ottavia range as an automatic chronograph movement with a nice orientation in terms of the, the, the arrangement of the, the subdials, as well as a 60-hour power reserve and a column wheel a clutch, which are all areas which I think add to the, the value of this watch. And the price of this watch will be 21,500 um, uh, AED, so that's, um, that's uh, United Arab Emirates uh, Durham's. But uh, in pounds, that comes to just under £4,400. There isn't really that much of a price increase uh, by comparison to the standard model. Um, for this, this version, though, of course, it will be limited to 150 pieces, and so will only, only be sold in, um, in the United Arab Emirates rather than, um, than anywhere else in the world due to it being a limited edition specifically for that area. Now, this month, we've also seen a very interesting limited edition of 50 from Audemars Piguet. And this is a watch which is remarkably difficult to find if, you're, if, you, um, if you haven't heard of the watch uh, in terms of on their website, and indeed on the internet in general. But it's, it's, uh, it's uh, an interesting 25th anniversary version of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, but the Offshore. And the Offshore was released in 1993 as a, a sort of a beefed up and an enlarged version of the Royal Oak design. And watch resistant to 100 metres with a chronograph, this watch is a very good replica of that 1993 model, um, with, with a few uh, modernisations applied, such as the, the bracelet, which now has, has a greater curvature to it. But uh, in spite of all of this, this watch is quite an interesting piece, especially for a, a collector of these watches, because it does present such an interesting addition. And I think a lot of brands are going back to their small, small quantity limited editions rather than the larger um, uh, limited editions of 10,000, which seem ridiculous when one thinks about it. So there are 50 of these watches that are going to be made, and um, they feature a 42mm case in keeping with the original, as well as those, um, those blue sections on the pushes and the crown to match that, uh, that, that petite tapisserie dial with uh, a cyclops over the date, as well as uh, that, that tricompax chronograph layout with a tachymeter on the internal bezel. The case of the watch is steel along with the bracelet, and it doesn't come on a rubber or a leather strap, but it only comes on this, this steel bracelet to be in keeping with the original design. As well as that, the, the movement in it is the, the calibre 3126-3840, uh, which is an in-house chronograph calibre from Audemars Piguet, and is very much um, uh, the correct movement to put in this watch um, as a, a, a luxury sports watch. And the watch uh, comes in at 25,000 Swiss francs, which seems like a, an immense amount of money for a steel watch. But then, of course, the original was, uh, was built around that concept of, um, of, of a luxury steel timepiece, which cost more than the, the equivalent gold. As well as that, this watch uh, is, is, um, is fitted with a 50-hour power reserve, as well as 100-meter water resistance, to take into account that additional uh, resistance that the, the offshore model always, always entailed. And of course, the story behind this watch is quite uh, quite entertaining because it's um, it, it, it was all it was the the case that uh, Gerald Genta, the original designer of the watch in the 1970s, um, stormed the the Audemars Piguet um, uh, stand when this was released, stating they ruined the design. And and I can see what he means in terms of the design becoming less elegant and less um, less minimalistic than the original. But certainly, for a, for a major collector, this watch will, will represent a, a very interesting piece, and certainly a curious piece as a, a counterpart to the, the original model from 1993. Attacking the same market as the, the Royal Oak, as well as the, the Patek Philippe Nautilus, and indeed the, the new version of the Gérard Perrigo uh, Laureato, we now see the Vachon Constantin Overseas Dual Time. And this is a piece which is quite interesting and has caught my attention, because it does show an interesting complication which is actually very useful on a day-to-day -day basis. And this 41 by 128 millimeter watch is reasonably sized to be one of these these um, these luxury sports watches, but uh, nonetheless uh, doesn't appear anything like a dress watch and certainly shouldn't be seen as such. And this timepiece is is anti magnetic and uh, and also has the the complication of a dual time setup. 
And that means that uh, courtesy of the, the caliber 5100 from uh, Vachon Stardin, we see a, a quick changing um, style of, um, of date along with this double time uh, feature. So you have the, the home time, which is represented and shown by the, the three central hands, as well as that, that, uh, that uh, extra arrow as the fourth hand, which points to the time in the other location, which is also um, uh, shown in terms of being AM or PM by the small indicator at 9 o'clock. As well as that, you get the quick set date at uh, 6 o'clock, and uh, a very interesting dial with, uh, with a layout which is far more akin to a chronograph than to uh, a, more, a, more, um, a more classically inspired uh, dress watch, for instance. And the case design is very typical of the overseas style, with that integrated uh, lug style where, where you have to have uh, a proprietary strap. And it comes with the alligator strap, the rubber strap, and indeed the metal bracelet, all of which have a quick release function, so you can change them out very quickly. Which I think is, is, is a, an appealing concept, especially when you, you are limited to these straps, to be able to change them quickly at the very least. Additionally, it's available in three versions. A, um, uh, well, two steel versions, which are available with a white or a, um, or a blue dial. And as well, as well as that, you can also get a white and pink gold model. And my personal preference is the steel version, because I feel that's more in keeping with the sporting aspect. But certainly for those who are after a gold watch, this is available. As well as that, the watch is water resistant to 150 metres, making it uh, perfectly usable as a, a sort of a luxury sports watch, if you so wish. In truth, the only part of this watch which I find doesn't work terribly well is the dial. Because I find the dial of this watch is, is overly cluttered in my eyes for a watch which could be much simpler. And especially when one bears in mind the fact that the, um, the, the, the indices um, running around the edge of the dial on the second track needn't be so complicated, bearing in mind this isn't a chronograph, um, and doesn't require that, uh, that level of accuracy in terms of being able to see which second it is. And so I do feel that uh, a less cluttered approach to the dial would have helped this watch, but nonetheless it's a very interesting timepiece, and one which I'm sure will have, have significant success bearing in mind its price range, which is very competitive with, um, with the, the Royal Oak for instance at uh, $24,700 for the steel version, and $39,500 for the, the version in gold, both of which come with both the, the bracelet and, um, and the leather strap, and uh, you also do get the rubber strap with that as well, though I'm not sure how many people with the gold version will wear it as such. Now the final watch I'd like to talk about is a piece with a name incredibly long, and in fact so incredibly long that it almost appears that Vacheron Constantin are competing with Elang and Zona for longer names. And this is the Vacheron Stantin Traditionnel Complete Calendar Collection Excellence Platine. And so this is a, a platinum dress watch with, uh, with a platinum dial, which is sandblasted to produce that wonderful uh, shimmering effect to it, which simply can't be achieved any other way. And this watch is, uh, is limited to 100 pieces and does form a, a very high-tier model of the Vacheron Stantin Collection as far as, as dress watches go. And it's a very subtle annual calendar because you see it has the, the day of the week on the, um, the, 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 the 9 o'clock side of the dial with the month on the, the 3 o'clock side and then at 6 o'clock with the, a moon phase which is graduated as well which is a fairly rare aspect of this as well as a, a pointer date with that blued uh, hand which extends with, a, with a, a, the, a moon crescent on its tip to, to indicate the, the date uh, during the month. And the watch as a whole is extremely delicately designed with uh, very simple features which are, which are extremely well executed with sharp edges and, and clear divisions between the different finishes on the watch. And the vast majority of the watch is, is polished with some, some, some small brush details to match that, um, that, that uh, sandblasted dial. As well as that we see all the applied indices you would expect with, um, with those Dauphin hands and that blued hand pointing to the, the date. As well as that, we see a recurring blue theme throughout this watch with the blue alligator strap, and then blue detailing on both the date, the, uh, the date uh, hand, as well as the, 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 the writing on the day of the week, um, the month, and uh, small, uh, small details on the, the moon phase uh, indicator. And the moon phase in indicator features a rather beautiful uh, engraved and embossed style of, um, um, of, uh, of decoration, which isn't coloured as you would normally expect it to be, but I think blends in with the dial very well. And the watch is, is accurate in terms of the moon phase to, to one day every 122 years, which is a remarkable feat, um, but is becoming more and more common in the world of moon phases, but is a testament to the quality of this movement and, and the care taken. And of course, for the price of $68,500, I would expect that. But nonetheless, Vachon Stantin are one of those brands which I feel are, are often overlooked and underrated, um, because uh, they're, they're put behind Patek Philippe, for instance, um, and Anne Lang and Zona, but I do still feel they hold an extremely important part of the high horology world. The movement inside this watch is also a real feast for the eyes, with beautiful detailing really throughout, um, with, uh, with uh, of course, the automatic winding of this, this Calibre 2460 QCL, which provides that to that date function as well as the, the moon phase. 
And of course, with Vachon Sardin, it's beautifully decorated and, and wonderfully made with very, uh, very precise detailing and, and clear edges on it, which uh, which is to be expected, really. But it is wonderful to see a movement like this, and uh, I certainly uh, view these sorts of watches as something which um, well, one, one never really gets to own, but are still fantastic to be able to look at and, and appreciate for their beauty and the, the, uh, the elegance of the design itself. Anyway, with this fantastic view of that Vachon Constantin movement, I'll conclude the video here. But do leave your comments down below as to what you think of these watches, and if there are any which stand out particularly to you in terms of interesting pieces. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, please do like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and would like to see more content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching, this is I'm on the Watch Guy, over and out.